dead transformer. So uh, for fun, I might tear this guy apart actually, since we're gonna have to wait a little bit. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, so we're gonna try and take this guy apart and see what we get. Because it just melted in here anyway. Let's find it. So if any of you have not seen the inside of a transformer before, we get to have the fun of finding that out. We're gonna disassemble this completely and take a peek so people can get a sense of what a transformer looks like. And I may release this also as just a separate video for people that want to find out what it's like to see a transformer truck taken apart. So these are what's called the bell ends, and I might be able to reuse any of this stuff at some point. Part of what looks to me like a good sign this is so bad is a lot of this stuff just looks all kinds of beat up and corroded. But, um, so we have all these wires now coming through here. Might be kind of fun to get them out because of all of them are at once, but let's see if I can get a couple at a time. All right, there's the other bell end. And now we have, you'll see here, these are what are called the laminations, and these are the windings. So um, they've gone in and soldered these guys on. Uh, and this, I think this side, if I remember right, this is the, this was the black and blue were like the uh, heaters and the high voltage line, if I recall. And then this was the primary side, and then we had some lower voltage stuff over here. But uh, I'm guessing if you look, I don't know how visible that is, but these were super, super frayed heavily. And that's probably what shorted out is like all of this is just rotted. And I think that's the core of the problem here. So um, I don't know how hard it might be to, since I'm, I'm just going to want to shred this and let people see what it looks like inside. All right, so you can see um, they just have gone in and soldered and wound these kind of leads on on all of these different ones. Similarly as well, and I actually see a lot of black going on right here, so I think that may be one of the ones that kind of choked and, and uh, melted and burnt out. So uh, There's just a huge amount of rust and corrosion as well throughout a lot of this, and that may be part of also what failed. Um, but at least we're getting to see the inside of a transformer here um, since this one died. Uh, the, so now you can see this, you can see some of the windings. So this is the copper winding. They had a little bit of tape to kind of separate some of their different layers and levels. But this one looks like probably one of the shorter windings that doesn't have as much on it. That goes to the blue. You know, you've got a maybe 20 or 30 windings of this, a little bit thicker gauge, so that was going to be heavier current. This is a bunch of smaller windings, and that's just some of those windings. Um, honestly, now I think also that the screws are loose. It may be that you can get these laminates to come apart, but I don't know. The first few are always the hardest because I think they tend to push this in pretty tight on purpose. But we'll see if we can pull some of those out. They may actually bond these together somewhat. It might make it kind of hard to get out. But So they have EI laminations is what it's called. And that, the reason that's called that is they have an E-shaped one and then an I-shaped one that kind of sits on the end and then they alternate those. So the I's alternate either side and the E's kind of flip over either way. But I can, I can see one of these seems to want to come undone, but the rest of it doesn't so I don't know again it may be kind of bonded with some kind of lacquer or something like that but. all right so well it may be kind of tricky now, oh, you can see that's peeled off a bit of the winding on that one already. Also, another thing you'll notice, I did suspect this could be bad, and that's why I tried to repair some of these, because I could see that it was worn. 
but there weren't even worse down inside of here, so. Um, but this inside here is also called the bobbin, uh, and that is what they wind things around. And uh, it, I may not be able to figure an easy way of getting these out. Somebody that's had more experience this might tell me that I'm doing this totally wrong. Uh, I'm not sure, but... Uh, luck getting them to come out. Yeah, I think part of it might be the first few are the hardest because they're packed so tightly in, but... That definitely does not want to come out. Um, if anybody has any tips, that would be cool, but I think the good thing about this is that you can at least see this is part of how the windings ratio work. This winding is a thicker gauge wire and has maybe Let's just see if I can count them. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on this or not, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen windings. Um, and there are just multiple layers. There's another one that has a winding on that one. As if I was to be able to break these windings and pull them off, then I would see that, but I can't get the bobbin out until I break apart the laminations, which don't seem to want to happen. So. Um, but I am definitely seeing a lot of corrosion on these wires. These have all broken loose, and I was getting all kinds of wrong voltages. My suspicion is the one that went is this one, because these are really black and charred down here. But um, you can see the start of that winding wanting to come off. I'm just kind of curious if any of this seems to come off easily or not. Um, well. If I get a chance and I can kind of tear this apart more, I will do so. I don't need to sit here on camera and fuddle with it and not get anywhere. You guys might enjoy, if I can get a little bit further, I'll show you what else I find out about that. So, there you have it. Of course, as soon as I get off camera, I immediately figure it out. It was actually pretty easy. I was able to pop up one of the eye laminations by kind of hooking into this hole. So, uh, I'll try and continue that process. So we'll just set the eyes over here. Oops. Uh, we'll just get them all out and we'll have everybody have a, a good look at it. There is definitely a bit of something that I'm having to fight to break it loose, but it is now coming. See if there's an angle somewhere where I can try and apply the right kind of pressure to get some to come out. Hey, look at that! There we go. And the other half should just come out. All right, so that's pretty much why they call it EI. As you tend to, let's get you a single one. You have these E's, and then another one that will go across like that, that's an I, and then you just interleave these back and forth like this, and then put another one of these on it each time. So, um, that is now the bobbin. I'm going to, and, and all of this paper is just kind of falling apart almost into powder in my hands, because it is so corroded and, and kind of old and beat up. I've got a fine dust all over my fingers. I think that's probably because of how bad this stuff is. 
Who knows, maybe it's got asbestos and I'm killing myself. <laughs> uh, no, I think this is generally kind of a type of tape from what I've seen. So if I were to take, this one is this blue one, if I now go and wrap around, this is the outermost winding and it will come undone. And on the other end of it should be the other blue one, so we'll go through that process and show you the, like I said, this one has about 16 or 18 windings and that will show a lot of wire. And that was it. So now you can see, literally, that's all it is. <laughs> this one long wire is connected on either ends by the blue lead. Um, inspecting the wire, I do see a decent amount of corrosion down the length of it. Um, and I am seeing quite a bit of bare copper also. So yeah, uh, there's some areas that look dark. Um, so, I, you know, that's a pretty good sign that that is what happened here. I'm going to wind this around my hand. So you can see roughly how many windings there were. Or how much copper there was to do that one winding, if you will. So that was the blue lead right there. Um, and for fun, I think I'm going to continue unwinding all of these and kind of just to see what... Uh, this looks like on the inside. Um, another thing that if you notice a lot of the what would be the sheathing of the wire has come has come off so that is pretty bad as well a sign that that's why this transformer went to uh, the way of the smoke. Um, I don't know that I will see a specific burnout because the fuse in my house might have gone before this really burnt the transformer up but when you have a transformer that is in that state there's not much you're going to be able to do to save it without unwinding it and completely getting new wire and rewinding it anyway uh, just due to the the problem that you have with the um, wire all being corroded on its sheathing so so there is another winding this was the red winding and, and if you can I don't know how clear that will be but you can see the gauge of the actual wire carrying a signal is much lower. All right, so now I'm going to try and get down to some other windings. No, actually, I can turn off my soldering iron and my fan. Probably not very helpful. This is a very thick gauge of wire, much thicker than either of these two. And we'll see which one. This one would have been possibly the heater windings, would be my rough guess, because the heaters run the most current. The heaters and the rectifier um, heating element, which is the 5 volts, both haul some pretty heavy current through them. They can handle a capacity up to five amps, whereas the other ones are in milliamps of range. I think a lot of times the power transformer primary for the high voltage carries four to five hundred milliamps, half an amp, whereas the heaters are hauling a lot more. And I will tell you as well, and although this may have not been as bad in situ where it was wound, all of it is peeling off the outer layer. When I wrap unravel this, the, the sheathing on this wire was so corroded that now just the lightest of movement is causing it to just flake away.
yeah, this is extremely fine wire. And this is going to have a lot of windings. We might be 10, 10, 15,000 windings. This is where you'll have the high number of windings to for the higher voltage things. And now we can see, I've peeled off about half of the round, I think, and now we're getting another layer. I'm going to just check the video. So as you can see, I'm resuming I have significant uh, part of this that I could now just keep going on. And I did get the middle section out as well. So this is the outer part, and I may be able to break that down and get some more of that little bit of copper out of it. But I think this is a good way of view viewing again this this particular winding is just wound around and it's coming off pretty well now now you're starting to see why transformers are so expensive there's a lot of copper in them and copper is not a cheap metal and on top of it this is a pretty you know even though they have machines that do all the work nowadays this takes a decent amount of work to wind these guys up and get them set for use this is another one of those primary windings that has a little bit smaller gauge wire because it's not using as much current, but it is running um, a big ratio of turns to, to adjust it. By the way, this is also how resistors get made, really. Um, they take a very large quantity of wire on the wire wound type that are kind of that can handle higher current they'll get a wire that can handle the gauge i mean handle the current that you're going to put through it and then they wind it a whole bunch of times they know the length the total length that they'll need to make something work so say it's a mile Better, that, sorry i was starting to try and wind that back up to kind of clean the mess i've made up i've been also to let you guys see about how much was in it but Now you're starting to see that's all just the plain copper that was on that one winding. The finer winding, I don't probably only maybe got a third of the way through, but that was the one that was you know carrying the least amount of current. Might have been the actual 120 main side because I think it, you know, it it steps it up to five six hundred volts. That's probably what this winding was. So it has to carry even less. But I may be getting that backwards. Maybe it's this is the 120 volt winding. I'm not doing the math. Obviously, I'm not able to do the math in my head. But one of the windings. When you step up voltage, the uh, amp capacity goes down. So now that I've said that out loud, let's think that through that. That means when you go from 120 volts up to a very large one, like 200 and 400, 600 volts or whatever, then the amp carrying capacity goes down. If you need to carry, say, 400 milliamps on the main one, and you've stepped up three times the voltage, that means that you, the uh, other side will have to carry that uh, three times the amount of amperage. So I guess if you're at, at let's say it was 500 or a half an amp, three times a half amp, that means 1.5 amps. So 120 volts actually would, this would probably be the 120 volt one then, through deductive reasoning there. If if that uh, makes sense to everybody. If not, please tell me in the comments below. But look at all of that. And you can see, if you look at that, look how much of this stuff is copper colored instead of the brown color. There's a brownish purple kind of coating that's obviously there that was what is supposed to protect this from shorts. And it has just literally come completely undone. And it is not working at all. So yes, this was a very badly old and dead transformer that had very little life left in it. This one will technically, I think, might have an even larger amount of windings because it is the secondary 
if my again my logic made sense because i think you need to have to step up you need to have double the windings for double the voltage so say you had 100 windings you'd need 200 windings to get the double voltage one and then so forth and so on so this one is likely the one that was the 400 or 380 ish volts that would be needed for those 6v6s and the and then uh, the, and the preamp tubes So that is going to have a lot of windings in it. All right, so look how filthy my hands are. That's mostly that material that came off. So in summary, many windings, laminations, around a bobbin, and that gives you your transformer. Uh, I'll try and link below videos that I've seen of people doing transformer winding to have a little bit of more information as well. So, but if anybody has any other comments, please do suggest what else we could have I could have discussed, and I might try and put some more detail around that as needed but that is a very cool little learning process thanks everybody